Good evening, and welcome to our first Friday night of the month meeting. We have been in a series about the heavens declare. This month's theme is the heavens declare his righteousness. The heavens are like a broadcast station for heaven. Whatever heaven is doing is broadcast in the heavens. What we want to do is be able to tune in with what heaven is saying in that invisible realm to hear through our spirit coming together. What is the latest news from heaven? <laughs> well, look within. That's where you'll find it, praise God. And we are the dimension of communication. We are the receptors of what heaven is saying through the kingdom of God into this earth. And if there ever was a time we need to broadcast what heaven is saying and not what earth is saying or the mind of humanity is saying, this is a perfect time, I'm sure we'll all agree. Well, we look forward to what the Word is going to bring forth to our understanding and what God has laid upon Sally's heart to inspire us with. So let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful time, this wonderful season of the year. We are in the springtime, the time of resurrection, blossoming, springing forth a harvest. We're calling forth for a harvest of righteousness. Yes. And may the word just do that tonight and just yes. awaken in our soul just seeds that have been planted from long ago, sparking, springing forth to life. May the spirit of revelation just awaken us all to a deeper understanding of divine intention flooding our soul to manifest the kingdom of God through us in this earth we may join together in celebration of it. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. All yours. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for the heavens declare his righteousness. We are so appreciative for you. And truly, this is a season where we, like none other time in history, do need to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And, you know, God loves righteousness. And I want to love what he loves. His throne is established in righteousness. And he wants to lead you and I, hallelujah, by his righteous right arm, right hand, into his presence divine, where we really are incorporated into a divine state of of mind. Amen. I just pray tonight that we would experience a divine influence of light, that his illuminating power and love by the Spirit of God would be so operational, we would come alive on another level. That's why Jesus came. He came to give us life he came to give us life more abundantly, and Jesus brought in the kingdom of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just want to pray, kingdom come, your will be done tonight in power, in love, and in great glory. God wants to release his glory or awaken his glory so that the glory that is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory rises. Amen. Glory. <laughs> That's a temperature change of the passion of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. And it's an increase of joy. We need his strength upon us like never before. Well, before I get started in the message, just want to bring your attention to our program we do every Sunday night called Spiritual Keys with Ken and Sally. And in May, this began. And just this month, 2021, I'm sorry, not this month, but this year, so far, we have reached 897,000 plus people through this broadcast. So share it with your friends, join in with this and hear what the Spirit would like to say through those broadcasts. They have been a lot of fun and we're in the Hebrew months is what we're going through and what are they relevant for and they're extremely relevant for our lives to really hear the theme of heaven. Amen. So God does like to speak. He is the word. 
<laughs> and the word is in you. Glory. And God is wanting to water the word, the seed, the incorruptible life that is within you. Amen. I want to come alive like never before. Why seeds produce. Hallelujah. Well, this series is taken from Psalms chapter 19, verse 1. It says, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Wow. David was a worshiper. He was a sweet psalmist of Israel. He heard God. He connected with God. He experienced God. And what he says in Psalms 19.1 is, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows or demonstrates or displays his handiwork. And this year, God wants us to be planted, to be positioned, in the heavens, seek those things which are above, where our life is hid with Christ in God. That's what we need to seek. Why? God is wanting to appear gloriously, victoriously, through his sonship company. Hallelujah. So the heavens declare. That means they're saying, they're speaking forth day unto day and night unto night. And as that seed and that word goes forth, the, the seed and the life of what he's saying brings us to another dimension. And it's a heavenly one. God is wanting heaven, the realm of spirit, to truly invade and pack all of our earth realm. Well, Job, he mentioned... In Job chapter 38, 32, actually God brought the subject up and God said to Job, can you bring forth Maseroth in his season? Maseroth is the 12 signs of the Zodiac. This is one of the first revelations to mankind from creator God. The Maseroth is the 12 signs of the Zodiac, the constellation, and the Maseroth, it marks the path of the sun. And you see on the right, that is the Maseroth, the constellation in the circle. Last time we looked at Aries, which was behold the lamb. Who's the lamb? It's Jesus Christ. Tonight, what we're going to look at is Taurus, but the Maseroth has something to speak with, with our hearts, to our hearts, because the heavens declare a story of glory of our divine journey from Christ back to Christ, back into glory. Truly, the heavens rule. I want to be influenced by the power of the Spirit of God, don't you? By his presence in our lives. His presence is leading us on. And God asked Job, can you bring forth Maseroth in its season? Hear this by the Spirit. We are in a season where God wants to demonstrate his power, love, sound mind within our lives, body of Christ, like never before. He wants to distinguish his house, whose house you are. There's a fresh anointing by his spirit that truly we be drenched with his presence from our head, our voice, our heart, our emotions, our walk in peace like never before. Glory, there's a fresh anointing from the throne of God to us today. See, the anointing, it breaks off every yoke. And some of us have a yoke on our ears that need to be broken. So we hear, so we believe that we can hear what the Spirit is saying. And you can hear. God says, my sheep hear my voice. Hallelujah. Speak to me, you might want to say. Talk to him. Commune with him in your spirit because he wants to bring forth a special revelation or understanding that is meaningful to your life now. <laughs> and the first 
thing we're going to look at is Taurus. And yes, Taurus is the bull. And Taurus, it's a wild bull or ox. And you see the picture there on the far right, Taurus. He's got his head lowered, his horns pointed forward. Always in scripture, horns speak of power. And it is a powerful moment as we connect to the wild bull of heaven. Uh, meaning he wants to furiously love you to life. Good news. He is jealous over you. Yes, he is the ox or the bull. He's moving forward on purpose and he wants to destroy all doubt in our hearts destroy all fear. See, perfect love cast out all fear. Taurus comes with strength, with power, and in mythology, the bull was always accounted as snow white, or the color of righteousness. Hallelujah. So this bull is connected, yes, with righteousness. Aren't you glad God loves you enough to lead you forward on to truth? Truly, his truth is marching on. And the more truth we have, the more freedom we'll experience. Our God is mighty, omnipotent, and all-powerful. Hallelujah. And in this sign, we see a chief star in Taurus is Aldebaran, and it's right in the bull's eye. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Truly, <laughs> Jesus is an all-consuming fire. There are fire in his eyes, and this word Aldebaran means the captain, the leader, or the governor. Hallelujah. Our great God, who is the chief prince, Fire, or God is a consuming fire. He is burning up everything that's not like him. Why? He wants a glorious, victorious church full of love, full of passion, full of strength, full of the joy of the Lord. Yes, he is Savior and he is judge of the universe. Yes, he is. And he comes to judge unto victory. That is what his corrective judgments are. And it's a good thing. Actually, Isaiah got a hold of this. When the Lord's judgments are in the earth because the people learn righteousness or learn the ways of the Lord. Well, in this Taurus constellation, we see... Something that I brought up in previous teachings this year. The Pleiades. The Pleiades is right on the top or the neck or the shoulder of Taurus. Pleiades is important. And Pleiades, it, you see there, it means seven sisters, seven stars, the seven spirits of God, and it also means the congregation of the judge. What does this mean? Pleiades is the fullness, seven, of the spirit of the living God. God is wanting his body to be full of the seven spirits of God, the wisdom, the understanding, the counsel. We need to be influenced like never before with the spirit of God. And it Pleiades also means dove. Hallelujah. The dove is the Holy Spirit in power and in might. We see this here in the constellation of Taurus. It has a lot to share with us and connect us to what God is wanting to do in the earth. Truly, the gospel is good news. The gospel is one of victory. It's one of triumph. And there is a company who God is wanting to gather forth by his power unto himself. 
as he is, so are we in this earth. Yes, body of Christ, God is wanting to judge you up, <laughs> to see you in Christ. There's a purpose for this, and we'll unlock that a little bit further. Hallelujah. Psalms 96, verse 9 says, O oh, worship the Lord. And truly, the more we get an understanding of God's purposes, it will cause our heart to worship. You are created to worship the Lord in spirit, reality, and in truth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness honor or fear before him all the earth say among the heathen the lord reigneth he's a strong awesome bull the world also shall be established that it not be moved he will judge the people righteously once again god is always into correcting aligning He's into mercy, he's into blessing, he's into love. He's into you and I living aligned with love and life. This lets me know, verse 11, let the heavens rejoice. When God's righteousness impacts you, when you are aware that, oh, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I what? Rejoice, let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Verse 12, let the field be joyful. This is connected to the bull, to Taurus, to worshiping, to being a fully aligned, because when we're fully aligned, we're going to be joyful, full of joy. And all that is therein, and all the trees of the wood, Everything is rejoicing because he is judging righteously. Do you realize the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy? It's in the Holy Ghost. So the more we rightly align with the lover of our soul, we will have more peace and more joy that flows. Verse 13 says, before the Lord, for he cometh. To judge the earth, <laughs> he will judge the world with what? Righteousness. And the people with truth. That is what his judgment is into. It's something that truly sets us free. Glory. God is wanting his righteousness, his judgment to be in our lives. Why? So we move in triumph. So we move in victory. So we move in the course of his purposes. Do you see? It's just a tone of joy, this psalm, because the righteousness of God is in the earth. Hallelujah. Are you getting more thankful for his righteousness? Glory. Well, Acts 17, verse 30 says, And the times of this, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now, I believe we're at this now, commands all men everywhere to repent. And this repent is to put on a rightly aligned mindset with heaven. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is in your midst at hand. Think like I think. Repent because he has appointed, verse 31, a day. Listen to this by the Spirit. He has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness, hello, by that man who he ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men that he raised him from the dead. Bear with me. There is a day. That day is a day that shines bright with glory and understanding and truth. And he's appointed a day. He's designated a man to judge 
Hallelujah. And that man is the one who has been raised from the dead. The passion lets us know in the Aramaic that God turns the hearts of men to faith in Jesus and raises them from the dead. I am talking about a resurrection life within a people, the body of Christ. He is the resurrection and the life. We are to awaken to righteousness, glory. He wants us to come alive on another level, allow the life of Christ to burst, to bring forth a harvest. Hallelujah. Resurrection life. There are things in our lives that God wants to resurrect. And I just want to read from a, a, a book by Richard Rohr. <laughs> And I don't normally do this, but I think it's interesting because resurrection life today is powerful and practical. And we need to practice it. We need to be planted in the heavens or in truth. He has 12 ways to practice resurrection now. One, there's 12. I'm only going to give you two or three. Refuse to identify with negative blaming, antagonistic, or fearful thoughts. Don't identify with them. You cannot stop having them. Another one, it's the fifth one. He says, choose your true self. We're going to unfold this a little bit more. Choose your true self, your radical union with God as often as possible throughout the day. And the sixth one, and the last one I'm going to read, always seek to change yourself before trying to change others. Glory. God is wanting to transform us like never before. There is a truth that transforms that God is wanting to bring about a people with truly a new mind, a new heaven, and then a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. This is good news. Yes, awake me to righteousness. Awake us to righteousness. Is this making sense? Is this connecting with you and with Taurus the bull who is really on our case? So we've got a cause to allow the gospel of the kingdom of God to infect, impact us, so we can impact the nations. I love it. Hebrews 6, 1. This is all in thinking of Taurus, the bull who's moving forward, who is the ox. And in Hebrews 6, 1, it says, Therefore... Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to what? Perfection, completeness. It is going on into Christ, into fullness. Hallelujah. Let that just sink in your spirit. Truly, God's truth is marching on. Listen to what it says. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Right here in this passage, you see a whole history of our church history. The foundation of repentance. You see Martin Luther, the just shall live by faith. And then from dead works and of faith towards God. That's John Wesley and of the doctrine of baptisms. That's Parham. That's baptism in the spirit and a baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire and of the laying on of hands. That's the latter rain movement. And what we need to be planted in, I believe is what it says here of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. How does that sound to your spirit? The resurrection of the dead. God is wanting to call all of Lazarus come forth. <laughs> but this is in the new covenant, better promises, better blood, better, better, better. 
and of eternal judgment, meaning an everlasting righteousness, what he has brought in, hallelujah. And this we will do if God permits meaning God is building his house, a glorious, victorious house, yes, full of resurrection life, full of resurrection power, full of the presence of God, of the kingdom of God, glory. God is wanting to give us, he's already given it to us, power, love, and a sound mind. His mind is the only mind that's sound. Yes? Hallelujah. God has got a plan and a purpose, and he is going to have his will and his way. I want to participate. Don't you? He wants to impart his heart to you. Glory. In this awesome day. Well, Amos was a prophet. Amos is the one who said, Amos 5 verse 8, seek him. Truly, we could kind of stop there. Seek him. What are we seeking? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything gets added. I like that. Added. Remember that. We're going to, God wants to add to you. And the more we allow righteousness to infect us, the more he adds to us his presence. But Amos said, Seek him that makes the seven stars and Orion and turns, I like this, the shadow of death, ignorance into the morning. God wants to give us a new day. We are called to seek Pleiades the seven stars, that's what that is, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and Orion. This is something that Amos said. It must be important, these two constellations, and they're in the sign of Taurus. Hallelujah. I think God wants to speak right, I mean powerfully, to our heart. Yes? So let's look at Orion. Orion. It's all having to do with this Taurus, with this bull, with the ox. Orion means coming forth as light. Does this make your heart sing? Who are you? You are a city set on a hill, a light. Oh, it's Jesus Christ too, but he is seeing our union with him. A strong one, a hero. Orion is he who comes forth in brilliant light. The Egyptian name means this is he who triumphs. What is God wanting to impart to you? A triumphant, victorious nature, light, glory, understanding, illumination. And you see Orion on the left, and you see a shield. What's that? It's a shield of faith. And you see there's a breastplate of what? Righteousness. Jesus was clothed with righteousness. He put it on as armor. And he is giving us, he gave us. He said, finally, be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God. That's for you and me to do or not ever take it off. And have your loins girt with truth. Well, that's Orion's belt. You see the truth there. He wants truth in our inner parts. Glory. Do you see this? Job was told this. Orion was mentioned twice in Job and in the prophecy of Amos. I think it's important that we get connected with what God spoke to the prophets. So basically, the coming forth as light, the strong one, this is a glorious, victorious invasion. How is God coming to earth? Through a people 
who are righteously aligned with the head, the prince, Jesus Christ. Well, Ezekiel got a revelation of this. Malachi got a revelation of this. Who will abide when he appears? He's coming. He's coming more and more within a people as we connect heart to heart, spirit to spirit with the word, which is spirit and life. Well, Ezekiel was a prophet who had a revelation of the end time manifestation of the sons of God in glory. And here's what he said, Ezekiel 43, 2. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came by way of the east. The east always speaks of a new day where the sun rises. And his voice was like the noise of many waters and the earth, it shined with his glory. God is calling us to shine, to be not only bathed in glory, but to be glory, grace and truth and manifestation. Hallelujah. Orion is typified, yes, by the coming brilliant light. But body of Christ, what this is saying is more glorious because God works through living stones who are full of his glory. This is speaking of the glorious sons who are arising in this hour. Despite what's going on outwardly, when we get in touch with what the Spirit of God is wanting to do within you, Christ in you, glory, and that glory is rising as we allow his presence. Glory, it is a season to be saturated, glory on glory, saturated with glory. Well, I said I'd mention the name Ad again. Well, Moses had a revelation of glory and Moses gave a blessing on the tribe of Joseph or Ephraim. The name Joseph means God will add. And in Deuteronomy 33, I'm going to just look at verse 17, but it talks about the blessing of Joseph. He had spiritual blessings, natural blessings. He had blessings of favor. His name was Ad. He was a ruler. He saw in the spiritual realm. He had dreams of the sun, moon, and stars. I won't go there. But in Deuteronomy 33, 17, this was the blessing Moses gave to Joseph. And his glory or honor is like the firstling of his bullock or ox and his horn or power like the horns of a unicorn, powerful. With them, there's a purpose in this powerful glory. With them, he will push the people together. That's, we'll finish the verse. God, by the bull, by his spirit, is wanting to push the people together. Where? God is gathering all things in heaven and earth into one, into Christ. This is just another way of saying what Ezekiel saw. To the ends of the earth. This is like saying there's no limit. I would go to the ends of the earth for you. There's no limit to what God is doing in this season. He's pushing a people to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim. There's so much here. Ten thousand is a number of abundance, but it's the ten thousand of Ephraim. Ephraim, the sign on his tribe was the ox. Ephraim got a double portion anointing. Hello. God is wanting his anointing powerfully manifested, yes, in this hour, in this season. You know, the ox is what was changed or transformed, transfigured into the cherub, which speaks of redeemed sons of God 
in glory. We see so many pictures here, but I believe God wants us to just connect with who he is in us. And I want to quote from St. Augustine. He said in one of his sermons, the end will be the one Christ loving himself. See, the wild ox, Jesus Christ, is pushing us into oneness, unity, union. That's what glory is. It's oneness. That's why the glory was given. Paul picked this up too. He said that God would be all in all. <laughs> What's excluded? Truly, God is wanting every enemy, every doubt, unbelief, all of the fears of the past replaced. <laughs> yes, replaced by grace and replaced by righteousness. That's why righteousness is so powerful. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm talking about resurrection life and power. The supernatural life that God wants us to experience. Now it takes practice because we've been practicing a long time in the realm of the earth. But it's time, body of Christ, we identify with heaven, glory, rejoicing, truth, might, peace, joy. Well, in Philippians 1.6, it says, being confident, and I pray tonight you have more confidence and trust in where you're going because you've got a chief bull <laughs> leading us forward, not backward, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you, yes, what good work did he begin? Mm -mm. Well, one thing is he's done is he started working Orion in your system. He's working the seven stars in your system, Pleiades. That's the fullness of the anointing within you. The perfect light, yes? God began a good work in you, and that good work... It's a worthwhile work. It's a meaningful work. Yes, it is an eternal work. And he will finish it. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The day is where there is a fullness of light, a love, of healing, or resurrection, power, glory. He's working on you that we believe. Like Abraham, he believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. Do we believe what God says? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Do you believe you are worthy? He's made you worthy. He began a worthwhile work in you. He will bring it to completion. <laughs> that will make you rejoice. See, all is added when we seek the right things. Seek first his kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. Seek his kingdom and righteousness. Everything gets added. Count me in. I want the portion of the firstborn, the anointed portion. Glory. We're living in a great day, a great hour. As we are, are tuned, attuned, aligned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's leading us on into fullness and into completeness. And in Ephesians 4, 24, it says, and to put on Jesus, Isaiah saw, he put on, he was clothed in righteousness, put on or practice the new self. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. Christ has become unto you righteousness. Put it on every day. Get aware. You're connected with the Holy One of Israel. Glory. We're to be transformed as we embrace the glorious Christ as our 
life. When Christ, who is our life, appears, we will appear with him. That's living in union with him in the realm of true holiness. And as we live in the realm of holiness, we're whole. We're complete. Glory. God loves us endlessly, perfectly, and he is jealous over you. He does not want you to stay where you are. He wants to impart his righteousness to you so you get aligned and in tune with the realm of him. He's so good. He took your filthy rags and clothed you in a robe of righteousness, of honor. May you feel that covering even now. Cover over you. You might say, well, you don't know what I've done. No, but God says you are holy. There is no spot in you. You are righteous because he made you righteous. Jesus has become unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. Why? He loves you. He's come to give us abundant life. The gospel is good news. Well, Job 38, 31, can, this is what God asked Job, can you bind the sweet influence of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? I believe the point God is making. When I've got a plan and a purpose, no one can hinder or stop my purposes in your life or in the earth because I am bringing forth a glorious, victorious church without wrinkle or spot or blemish. God's got a plan and a purpose, and it is an eternal purpose. And it is something that includes us, that we rise to the occasion as we are infused with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by the Holy Spirit who is powerful. The more we nurture the nature of Christ, the more we mature and come to perfection. Yes, completion in Christ, wholeness in Christ. Not because of anything I've done or not done. It's because of what he has done. And when we know he's made us righteous, our behavior will be such. Amen? Good news? Well, it is good news. David sure got it. <laughs> Psalms 97, verse 1 through 6. Let this get in your spirit. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the islands be glad. And you know what? The Lord loves righteousness. He anoints us, body of Christ, with the oil of gladness. Clouds and darkness are about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. He judges righteous judgment. His judgments are blessing. His judgments are repay good for evil. His righteous judgments are being in alignment with him. They're the habitation of his throne. Oh, his throne is all glorious. Verse 3, a fire goes before him. God is a consuming fire. And what the fire does is it burns up his enemies round about. God is burning up some enemies in our life. Once again, the enemies are doubt, unbelief. He wants to replace fear with his love, which is shed abroad by the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, his lightnings enlightened the world. What does this mean? It means Orion is coming forth, coming forth in brightness, in understanding, in light. 
when you have light, when the day dawns, you've got purpose and direction, clarity, and move forward with Taurus, the bull. The earth saw and trembled, and I'm pretty sure this word trembled is they spun around under a mighty influence, and I think they changed and danced. They got happy feet on because the kingdom worked down to their feet. Peace was their portion. The hills melt like wax. Any problem, when you put it up with the majesty of Christ, they melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, verse 6, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people his glory. I want to be declaring meaning aligning with what he is saying and doing and being. Oh, through me, yes? The heavens declare he's all righteous. He's good. He's working on me. The people see glory. Where does glory appear? It arises within you. And it says the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. God wants a people who know their God because those who know their God, they are strong like a bull. They're bold like a lion and do exploits. Hallelujah. Well, we're just going to look a couple more things. Stay with me. The Maseroth. It's a Hebrew word found in Job and it literally means garland of crowns. I like this because there's a crown of righteousness reserved for those who love or who long for his appearing. God, what A crown, what does that mean? It means you've got authority. God wants to crown us with his presence of righteousness. Why? God wants you to do a powerful work, what you were created to do on planet earth. Romans 5, 17 says, receive abundantly of the gift of the grace. As you receive abundantly of the gift of righteousness, what do you do? You reign in life by Christ Jesus. God wants us to reign, to have that crown in life. See, it says in Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. God wants you to rule and to reign with him. Jesus came to give us life and to crown you with his presence, with life. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. The whole reason God is desiring that his seed, Jesus is the seed who was sown and he was sown, he died, and he is coming forth in a harvest of, yes, righteousness, a harvest of sons of glory, a harvest. Because the, the point is, it's a harvest of righteousness, but the new covenant that is far better and the administration that the blood of the lamb brought for us is the ministration or administration or the order of righteousness. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3, 9. That what? It exceeds in glory. Whoa. Meaning it surpasses, it is greater, greater, greater. God is wanting us to experience a greater glory, a greater righteousness within us. Just like David prayed that I would behold, get a revelation, your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied when I awake <laughs> with thy righteousness. His righteousness is my righteousness. And whoa, there's an awaking coming in this hour. I'm decreeing it, declaring it, because I see it here. We're to awake to righteousness. Awake to the alignment with our Father. 
He's got a plan. It includes you and it includes your satisfaction. He wants you to be satisfied. And when you're satisfied, you're full of glory. Therefore, ha, 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 he is glorified. It's a beautiful day. I'm so happy you listened. And I hope this touched your heart in a deep way where you agree with him to declare his glory, to declare his righteousness, that night never before your heart would believe because it is the gift of righteousness and therefore our mouth make confession of his great salvation within our heart. I love the gospel. <laughs> It's a gospel of glory. It's a gospel that affirms my righteousness in Christ. It confirms that we have been made righteous by the innocence of the life of the Lamb through the Spirit of grace. Hallelujah. May you run this race with passion and with His presence. May you be blessed. And as Ken comes, I'm looking forward to our next program on Gemini. And a month from now, be blessed as you hear from heaven and declare his righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, sweetheart. I know you were blessed by that word tonight. I want to relate something here that I believe will, sense, in a sense, pull things together from a comprehension of a universal perspective. Do you ever stop and think that your life is actually part of a master comprehensive stage that spans or literally goes beyond or transcends time and space? We have a sense of a beginning. We have a sense of an ending that fits the stage of time. But our existence, our being, and our destiny is before time and beyond time. I was looking for a particular statement I knew that came from William Shakespeare, and I looked up the remainder of the statement, and it's this. Now, I want you to catch this. All the worlds, a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages, not stages, seven ages. I just rejoiced when I saw that part of the statement because I remember it wasn't but a few years ago the Holy Spirit had spoken very clearly to me and spoke of seven ages of the world. And that's why the number seven is so significant. It is not only a number of perfection, but it is a number of sequence or succession or progression. It is moving from one point to a perfect conclusion and which everything climaxes in a perfect redemption. That's what rest is. And that's why even our biblical account of creation, it really wasn't meant to be a biological academic treatise on the development of life, it was a segment from a certain stage being played out to portray the restoration of the soul or the restoration of the mind or mind of the son. And when you look at the accounts in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, there's a slight difference, but overall you get the sense of a progressive development, a God speaking into the vortex or into the void, a declaration and a formation coming out of a swirling mass of unformed matter. And God says, let there be. And Paul over in 2 Corinthians 4 relates to that. The God who called forth light out of darkness being the one who has shone in our hearts, meaning he shines from within us. 
to give light, to give revelation, to give understanding or unfolding. When you go to the book of Job, for example, it's such a unique book, and it's regarded as the actual oldest written book of the Bible. And the story of Job opens up as if it were the opening night of a theatrical production. But what's so unique about the story is, it's like you have a program in hand, and you're actually reading about the development of the story, who produced it, what its direction and purpose. Not just who the players in the story, but behind the scenes. I want to take that just briefly back to the Genesis account. Because when you look at the creation story, it centers in this formation of the earth coming out of a state of chaos. We are made aware in the first two verses of Genesis 1 that this present earth as we know it is not an original creation. It's more of a reformation or a restaging. There was a more perfect creation prior to this one that went into a state of chaos or flux. And our story opens up with a reformation coming out of that chaos, that mass, that void or vortex, a restaging because of the intent of the heart of God to restructure the human mind or the human story or really more perfectly the story of the soul which we see begins with Adam. Adam is separated or fragmented in his mind and the whole world comes forth out of the mind of Adam, the soul, as a dream. He was put to sleep, and in the dream came the fragmentation, the separation that continues to fragment and separate today. But you see, the beauty of it all is that is only one age. We have a progression of ages in which the story of redemption will reach an ultimate climax or perfection or fulfillment that God will be satisfied that literally his son or sons will come back into the perfect perfection of their creation as one son. So in the story of Job, you have the scene from the background in heaven. And Job is just an unwitting character, but he's the focus of the story. He represents a character unwitting in a story who relates to God from his own human perspective. He is a righteous man. He is faithful to what he believes, but his knowledge is not complete, and therein lies the problem. Like most of us, we grow up with a concept of God that's developed by many processes, beliefs, and concepts, and experiences, and it forms and it develops. And that's the God we relate to, the one that we have formed a conscious understanding of, as is the world around us. The world is nothing more than the projection of our thoughts. So we have, in the essence, in the book of Job, we have the top office, the producer. And then we have the behind the scenes, all the aspects that help create, for example, when you watch a movie. And at the conclusion of the movie, you go through a long list of entitlements, recognition of every contributor to the producing the movie, down to the drivers. I mean, just everyone is included that puts this story together without which it would not be possible. But what you and I see, basically, is flashed on a screen, all concisely put together what may have taken years to produce, or months at least. Do you stop and think when we are looking on the screen of a movie that the movie is not taking place on the screen? It's already been produced. We are watching the projection of it from behind us cast on the screen, but we're seeing it as if this is what is present. This is the reality. This is what's happening right now in this very moment. But when you stop and examine it, you realize, well, no, that's not possible. But do you realize the world that we see seemingly being played out here is a manifestation of what's going on in here? Well, one last thought I want to go into a conclusion with is this is why the tabernacle of Moses is such a powerful structure. 
It is a three-stage blueprint that literally represents spirit, soul, body. Earth, heavens, heaven. It is a progression that I use it vertically to better understand how the process takes place. The heavens, which really is the invisible realm, is the link between heaven and earth, it's where heaven and earth come together as if in the body of Christ or in the churches, which is what the holy place represents. It is the interaction between the visible and the invisible. For we see that God has dispatched the angels, as we see in the book of Hebrews, they are sent out to minister to those characters who are progressing spiritually and to the redemption of their soul, not religiously, but spiritually, are going into the formation of Christ within. As Paul says, I pray that Christ be formed within you or into a completeness. That progression, that development, that transformation, you can call it transfiguration, transformation, these are all processes. The world, even as Shakespeare was saying, is a progression of our own experience through the ages until there is a masterful completion which is represented by the seventh day, which is the day of rest. When everything comes into its perfect conclusion and all returns to a perfect state of oneness in God, because precious ones, there is no reality outside of God. There is nothing outside of God. We are in God. We are the expression of his own thoughts. We are the progression of a story that's being played out through our minds and our experiences in time until we return back to timeless perfection in which we were created from the beginning. Now, what's the point in saying all this? You and I are unwitting characters in a world that is a stage, a particular theater. Now, going back just briefly, why is it that the writer in Genesis, why is it in the story that's being told, it doesn't talk about the planets and the celestial bodies far beyond. It talks about earth, heaven, the heavens, the separation of the waters, the connection between heaven and earth, and then it just refers to the heavens. Now, the heavens could be universes of universes, planets upon planets, but it doesn't say it that way. It's not focusing on that. It's not trying to take us beyond that. It's just focusing on this stage called earth because that's the ultimate visible, physical dimension of the theater that you and I are a part of a story being played out. So with all the chaos, all the confusion, all the conflict that is so prevalent in our hour, guess what? The story's already been written. It's already accomplished. It's already complete. And we are playing out the realization of that story through our faith. We want to progress beyond what seems to be the present, that is nothing more than the past being replayed, until we come into a state of rest within our own soul, that we enter into that rest, the redemption of our soul. As God said to Daniel, go your way, enter into rest, you will arise at your allotted portion at the end of the days. That's what happened with Abraham. It was complete in him, the end from the beginning. And God says through you, all nations of the earth will be blessed. That's the ultimate. No matter how many ages it takes to complete that. In Christ, it's accomplished. And our faith is our participation in the story that we come into agreement with the perfection of, of a total redemption, that all things in Christ are complete, perfect one. What was lost in Adam is being fully restored in Christ, and precious ones, there is no other ending to the story. That is the ultimate redemption, and every soul eventually returns through a process of time and space or through ages until we come into that ultimate completion. That's what we want to focus on. Don't get distracted in time. Look in the present moment within the soul and rejoice that your faith has already connected you to a perfect ending of what may be a questionable beginning as far as fragmentation. But if you remember and recall or establish in your mind, I began in God, I've never left God, I remain in God, 
and whatever goes on through my mind, all is a processing of a story that has a perfect conclusion, perfect love, cast out all fear. The riddle is removed, the veil is removed, as Paul says, we will know once again as once we were fully known. Praise God. So rejoice, the heavens are just a masterful structure behind the scenes between the visible and the invisible to help the playing out of the story on earth. But we are connected with heaven, we're connected with the top office, and we know how the story ends. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you that the heavens declare your righteousness. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, and it's or his righteousness. That's why we're told to get our focus on what is real, what matters, what is eternal, and what will restore our eternal identity. And we just rejoice that the Holy Spirit is that link, that connecting agency that brings us all into access to heaven itself, where perfect knowledge, perfect love, and perfect peace are ours even now in Christ Jesus. Bless each one who has watched and will watch this broadcast to remember don't look outside and try to figure out the end from the beginning of a world of chaos and confusion. Look within, draw from the well of your spirit, for that's where eternal life is ever flowing out of our innermost being. There's only one voice of many waters, and that voice is our Father speaking through his Son, bringing us back to a perfect oneness conclusion in grace. In Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to these moments together on the monthly, first month of each Friday. And as Sally said previously, don't forget the Sunday night broadcast, Spiritual Keys. We'll look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.